I didn't get to make my point about combat, but we'll let Nick go. Well, no, I, no, I mean, no, I, I, I opened it to you, and you just talked about being naked with animals. So <laughs> yeah. you had your chance. <laughs> yeah, I was go getting, ahead, I was getting somewhere with that. Yeah. <laughs> it was, Brian was leading. Hello. Welcome to the Bushley Gaming Podcast, your source for ordinary opinions from ordinary gamers. Today, we're talking about the Hogwarts Legacy State of Play. I'm your host, Jacob Bush, and with me today, he has swallowed so much gum that he hasn't had a bowel <laughs> movement in 16 years. Leah's and Tendites, Ryan Scalp. <laughs> I knew that one you wasn't me. You don't need to. Yeah, you don't. You don't. I just filter feed, so I get all my nutrients. Just <laughs> like SpongeBob. Is that, a, and, is that a thing? I think it's a fish SpongeBob? thing. I don't know about SpongeBob. Have. I haven't watched in a long time. Feeds. Nick, why did you know that was Ryan? I see. I just like as soon as you started talking, I was like, "That's not me." <laughs> well, anyways, when at weddings, he always asks the DJ to play the Cha Cha Slide. Your favorite Crip Boy, Nick Beard. Yeah, the, there's something weird about me and weddings, and uh, I there feel is. really, I feel embarrassed about Adam's wedding. <laughs> I Adam's wedding. Nick, where's that video, dude? We went I hope the video hard. never comes out. Wait, we haven't seen that these video yet. These three, to all our listeners, these three gentlemen putting on this podcast went so hard at our friend Adam's <laughs> wedding that at one point, us three felt like we looked, we felt like we looked like Dirty Dancing, like the movie. I think I lifted, we I alone. lifted Nick up. I looked at oh, you I did. Nick too. We both at seven. Yeah. I did a full I was, with Nick. And I, I was, was twerking on someone. I'm not allowed I started in the state a cha-cha of California slide. anymore after Dude, that. Yeah. <laughs> at one point, we were the only three on that dance floor. And everyone was like, man, these guys, they need help. They need professional help. Yep. Because we were just, I was sweating profusely all over Nick. I'm a different human at weddings, and it's weird. It was a great time. Yeah, Anyways, cha-cha well, now. Guys, let's talk about Hogwarts Legacy. Um, this occurred or this aired, it was a state of play, a state of play dedicated to Hogwarts legacy, which is actually kind of weird. Really? We don't usually get third party state of plays dedicated to a single game. I can't think of one actually from the past. This aired on March 17th, 2022. This is the WD WB produced game. Um, Hogwarts legacy based in the Harry Potter universe. It's set before the films, but still in the same timeline, technically. The footage we saw today is considered a work in progress. Progress. Um, it contained a mix of gameplay and in-game cinematics, and all of the footage was captured on a PS5 dev kit. That's all worth noting, I think, because um, sometimes when you see these trailers, it's like on a really nice PC. The fact that this was from a PS5 is it means it's going to be close to what we're going to be playing, hopefully. Um, yeah. Guys, first off, overall thoughts. Ryan, start with start you. Start with Nick. No, no, no. Start with Nick. He's the real Harry Ryan, Potter we're, fan. Ryan, we're gonna. Ryan, we're going to start with you. What were your overall thoughts? I would like, uh, I would like to throw over to Nick. Uh, pop, yeah, pop, pop, I, I guess I'll popcorn go. Nicholas. Yeah, let's. Let I, would, I guess I'll say this. I don't know about my overall thoughts, but maybe Nick, my you share overall your thoughts. thoughts maybe my Nick, thoughts. What do you think from about first this Hogwarts Legacy Nick, state of play? Let's let's yeah, let's see what <clears throat> Nick thinks. Yeah. Uh, this, so, this just in, uh, throwing it over to Nick in the studio. Nick, what did you think of Hogwarts Legacy? I like I like the popcorn one. That uh, took me back. I think compared to when we saw the first release, which has been, what, six months now? Yeah. Longer bro. than that? E3 maybe? Much longer. Maybe longer. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like we were talking about it with Tim Ham in his studio. So... Yeah, longer. It, that was almost a year. Anyway, it's, been so, over, it's been about a year, I think. Yeah. So the first, first video came out. And we were like, wow, that's sick. That looks really interesting. We're super, uh, you know, stoked about it, motivated, looks cool. What we saw today was, in my opinion, a confirmation that it's going in exactly the direction that we wanted it to go in that yeah. it's truly going to be this expansive experience. And I'm really glad that it's in the 1800s before the previous stuff so that we get kind of like this different feel and this new taste. So my overall thoughts were that uh, this definitely went in a really good direction, in my opinion, based on what I watched. And I, I mean, I don't know. I, it, I guess even if it went in the other direction was pretty crappy, I'd still be playing it. At the very least, it looks really good graphically. Yeah. Um, art style yeah. looks really good. Ryan, what do you think? 
yeah, I think this is, I think this is awesome. Um, I'm really excited to play it. I, I feel like they've kind of won the, uh, I just feel like there's huge, huge franchises that could have been doing this for a long time. And so Harry Potter to take like a cinematic universe and make it into this like open world one player experience. Um, I feel like they're really the first ones to nail that. Obviously uh, there's Marvel Avengers, which is not this at all. Um, And then Star Wars has tried some open world kind of feeling games, but they, they, there's never been like a true role playing uh open world game for a lot of these like major franchises you know if lord of the rings or star wars yes. had done this yes dude, i thought lord of the rings we would have been all over it i saw this yeah. and i was like i wish there was I, i've always wanted a lord of the rings game like this too um yeah so it's and i've always kind of harry potter and lord of the rings were formative to my like entertainment as a kid so like they're very connected to me um so yeah, you know, Star Wars hasn't gone full action adventure RPG yet, right? Uh, Kotor was just more like a a Western RPG, um, right. and we didn't have like those action elements that's present here in Harry Potter. So yeah, there's the the IP execution thing hasn't happened much from an open world um, role playing game. I think yeah. Batman Arkham is the closest to a really good open world with a, a big IP attached to it. And again, we're talking about WB again, like WB has done some pretty good games i think when, when we're <clears throat> attaching ip to it specifically on the dc side of things um but i, I was surprised it, it's funny you bring up marvel's avengers I, w- I was watching jeff grubbs um kind of live reaction to this and he he's very skeptical and he's like i think this is gonna be like marvel's avengers and i strongly disagree because one of the biggest problems with marvel's avengers is that it was kind of supposed to be a live service game in no way have they telegraphed that this is supposed to be a live service game. This is supposed to be kind of a single player RPG um, without, you know, we haven't seen any multiplayer elements either. So to me, Avengers fell into the pitfall that it did because it wanted to be a live service, this game you're pumping money into. And Hogwarts Legacy is just, it seems like it's going to be a good game. I think what I was most nervous about with this game is um, that they were going to go the, like, the big multiplayer route, you know, like they did with... um, elder elder scrolls online uh there was a star wars game online for a while that was like a you know mmo that's kind of what i thought that this would be and so when i saw that it was very much just a singular it's a one player game with some narrative and open world aspects dude yes like why hasn't everyone done this i just feel like it's a no-brainer yeah, and you know, if, yeah. if the depth is there, that's why no one has done it because this looks very deep, and it probably takes a lot of work to make something like this. Nick, you were right. going to say yeah, something. Yeah, the, right? the world alone. I mean the the different the amount of different landscapes that we see in caverns, and uh, <clears throat> I thought one thing that was interesting was the seasons. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, it just looks like a really detailed game. Like they put some serious work into it, and I don't know. I'm about it. So I, uh, I'm not a fan of the Marvel games. Hey, so should, I, I hope that we go in the opposite direction of that. Have you guys taken the quiz of what house you're in? Yeah, I was gonna actually. I had a question here for you guys today. Real quick, I wanted to touch on what Nick said, and we'll, we'll circle back to the Ryan. Um, for the listener who or watcher who did not see this presentation, um, I will be playing it on the YouTube video. So if you want to check it out while we talk about it, I'll put it there. But Nick just referenced the seasons, and there's a system in place where. You know, they showed snow and fall and spring and summer, and the environment was changing um, with the season. And what they explain that is, is that as a student of Hogwarts, you know, as you progress throughout the school year, the season is actually changing with you, which to me, that opens up so many narrative doors that it's not just like you're playing in like a five day period, right? A lot of games are set in like this small section of time where you're just like, you know, trying to save the world in these, you know, three or four days. The fact that this is kind of elongated across a, a year of education, I think is a really cool element that opens up like longer story developments and and mm. doors to like different things you can explore just because environmental changes with the season. Ryan, what do you think of that? Yeah. Did you notice that? Oh yeah, I think it looks amazing. That's, that's just the future of like, it's, I don't want to say it's cheap, but it's very... Um, 
uh, resourceful, I think, when you add seasons, not only does it really look cool to the person playing the game, but it gives you a huge amount of variation in one scene, right? So you have one landscape that can look four different ways and reveal four different things and four different types of fauna and, you know, growth and all sorts of like interesting things. So, um, I think it's, I think it's <clears throat> brilliant. And a lot of games have seemed to be doing that lately. Yeah. But the, uh, the movies also did this, right? Like some of the movies also took us through the seasons and it gave us this feeling of an audience member being carried along with Harry and everyone through the entire school year. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I think that there's a little bit of power behind it as well. Uh, when I think about the movies and it's like you're, you're watching them arrive and then all of a sudden they're, you know, a quarter into school and it's snowing. Oh, I love Christmas uh, time. And Harry dude, Potter. Hogwarts, Christmas, Christmas, the best. nothing better. Yeah. The best. And then they're going into the spring and they're, you know, they're going to play uh, Quidditch and it's like, <clears throat> I don't know. I think, I think that was just a really cool aspect and, um, the snow looked sick, you know. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. I that was, was like, some sick snow. That was bro. some sick Dude, snow. Did you see so the reflection? Sick. That snowflake falling. That was beautiful. I want uh, Ethan to uh, make snow. that slow motion real quick. So did you Nick, see the snow, Ethan Meister? Get on that, um, <clears throat> Nick. You brought up, you know, seeing like referencing the films real quick. I mm-hmm. want to just ask because I don't actually know this about Ryan. I think, but. What is your history with Harry Potter? Did you read the books? Did you watch the movies? Um, and if so, how much of all of those? Yeah, so I have. I actually have a. I mean, I can't sit here and claim that I'm like the biggest diehard fan, but I have a very like intimate experience with Harry Potter. I have no idea why. With Harry. My, my Potter? with uh, Rad. Yeah, Radcliffe himself. My parents bought me the Harry Potter cassette tapes when I was like in third grade. Uh, which is weird because my parents would like that's a weird thing for my parents to do. Well, like you and can't, so I you remember can't read the books, so get him cassettes. because I couldn't read. <laughs> oh, here's some. Wait, no, hey, you man. might be able to read that well at third grade, right? I'll give you some credit there. Yeah. So, uh, so I remember listening to them, and they were like the audio, like one of the first audio books that had like sounds and stuff like that. And then I've read through the entire series uh, two and a half times. So some of the books are some of the best books that I've ever read. And sometimes I'll just like go jump into them just to jump into them for a little bit. So hmm. so you've now read every book two and a half times through? Two and a half times, yeah. Goodness yeah, gracious. and the, uh, there's a digital copy on iBooks that came out a few years ago. Uh, and every like 20 pages, there was like uh, a photo and it's animated. It'll like actually move and stuff, and so uh, I know there like are a ton of cool versions now. <clears throat> yeah, I yeah. Like the pictures. So. Ryan, what's your history like? I didn't realize Nick is the expert here today. Nick is the expert. This yeah. is a little. This gets contentious. It doesn't have to, guys. It doesn't have to because I. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> Ryan say Lord of the Rings <laughs> was, Yeah, I just know I've been in this conversation a thousand times. Lord of the Rings was my Harry Potter. I grew up. I've read those books. Um, I'm rereading them right now, like Nick is doing with Harry Potter. And uh, man, I, that was like my life. And so there was always this kind of like, oh, Harry Potter is like the lame version of Lord of the Rings. But that was, you know, I was young and immature. And then once I got into college, I really like with my roommates dove into the movies because my roommates were actually all Harry Potter guys. So, um, I, I learned to love it. I've never read the books actually. I've only Dude. watched the movies, but I've watched all the movies probably twice now. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate it. I think I also, this is, I know this is a little controversial. I love fantastic beasts and where to find them. Wow. Probably more. Whoa, because get out of here. I know, I know, I know. I'm a I love I love animals. My wife and I will watch like Ryan said this doesn't have to be contentious because he knew he was gonna drop this. I yeah, knew, that I was the was ridiculous. I was fine yeah. with you the whole way until you said that. Well, dude, I love that movie because I love like nature documentaries and stuff, and I just feel like the the You the like to uh, you like the very like smog ridden black and white film. Dude I just really, I really liked all that they came up with as far as the beast. And so when I saw that in this trailer, um, where you get to really experience a lot of the creatures that are in that movie, but also new ones that they've made, I'm like, 
dude that's what i'm i'm gonna be a beast tamer man that's gonna be which my, yeah that you can power. do that in this game right yeah. yeah i'll say this there are people that are like the books are always better than the movies and it's not true it's not true all the time uh harry potter is definitely one of those series where the books are just uh, the movies are fantastic. I have nothing bad about the movies. I, I'm literally going to watch one after this. Yeah, but the books, the Harry Potter books, were some of the m- most well written books I've ever read. Wow. When it comes to fiction. Okay, so here I'll go into my history then. And you're really persuading <laughs> me to read the. So I've read the first two books. The first book I've read twice, actually. I've seen all the films multiple times. The first two films are like cozy films for me, like when I just want something that's comforting. Especially yeah. the first film. It's just like the whimsy and like the mystery Classic. around it all. It's just, it's yeah. so, it's like a cozy, cozy, um, feel good movie. So I've seen them all. I really actually drop off on the films of actually liking them as they get more serious and dark. I know that's that might be slightly controversial because it gets really good at the end. But as far as rewatchability, I go back to the earlier ones. And again, only read the first two books. Nick, you're persuading me to read the other ones. Um, because they're yeah, good books, man. I, I didn't read much as a kid and the first Harry Potter book just completely <clears throat> like clicked with me and I loved it. So I wanted to address that a little bit just to get our, I, I really didn't know Nick was that versed in Harry Potter and I didn't know Ryan had such <laughs> bad taste in films. So, um, <laughs> dude, I, I love Harry Potter, man. It's uh, one of, it's nostalgic for me. I'm really, I'm, I mean, it's crazy to think it was over 20 years ago. Is it really? I think 2001 is the first. Uh, wow. Yeah. Hey, man. Weird. We're old. Um, guys, I want to go back to Ryan's question here. What houses are you? Do you know what house you are? Okay. I feel Ravenclaw. Like I, can, I feel like I can guess both of yours is Ravenclaw. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Ravenclaw. Bunch of Ravenclaw nerds. Ryan's I'm a Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Of course you are. I can Adam totally was a Hufflepuff. That, yeah. 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 I Nick, see that. Yeah. I, so I get <clears throat> Slytherin vibes sometimes from Nick, but I don't really know why. <laughs> I, I also think Nick has some Slytherin vibes. I did, yeah, yeah. It's the order. I think, his, I think like, the mixing hat didn't know rather to put order. me. Yeah. The mixing hat didn't know rather to put me in Slytherin or Ravenclaw. Yeah. And I honestly, you're like very much there. a mix of those two. Very, very yeah. much so. It's funny because one of my closest friends in college, he was also Slytherin, I remember, and um, he had like the the ultimate Slytherin personality, and so I very much annoyed him with my kind of ambitious, loud, <laughs> like Righteous. personality, and Gryffindor. I couldn't stand that he would rather stay at home and read a book sometimes than hang out with me with friends and stuff. But it was, I mean, dude, the quiz, it's real. It is real. It's and real. That's probably the most science. accurate personality <clears throat> science, science we have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like the Harry Potter quiz, then the Enneagram, then Myers Briggs, and then it just like keeps going down from there. Yeah. So, so I, I wanted to bring that up actually specifically because you do get sorted in this game. There's a sorting hat scene. You have a fully customizable character, <laughs> um, and I just love that it's it's going that in depth to like you make you can make yourself. You can answer. I'm sure there's going to be a questionnaire along those lines. You can answer the questions and you will be sorted in, in those four houses. And they showed the different like common rooms for the four houses, which was really cool to see in the 1800s, which you do see in the films a little bit. Some cool features also along the lines of kind of like play your own way is that you attend different classes. And those classes range from like actually doing magic duels in class, learning how to do defense spells and whatnot, um, brew potions, like uh, grow plants. Uh, and just like these are these are scenes we see in the movies, right? There's there's all of these different classes you see and you get to do it and you can it looks like you can do it on your own time because they hint that in between classes you can explore the uh, the castle grounds and, you know, go into, you know, secret dungeons and the woods and and find these cool things. Um, does that excite you at all? The class element to this it, to me, it's. I've only played one game where there's a class element feature and that was uh, fire emblem three houses where it very much is a, a, a school, a training yard um, for you're a you master know. of war now. Yeah. In that game kind of, I mean, yeah, they're training to be like warriors. <laughs> they are. Um, so I don't know. I like a master of war. Strategy. <laughs> yeah. It, it, like they literally like you can pick what type of class you want to attend and that will level up different skills. This was in, in fire emblem three houses. So, um, 
I'm curious, have you played any games with classes? Does this interest <clears throat> you? Does this turn you off? Because at school, uh, Ryan, you look like you have an opinion on this. No, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. I, I guess I've never really experienced it that much. I always wish that um, I remember playing Skyrim when you get to the wizard college, the like <laughs> magic college. I always wish. That yeah. yeah. Oh, what is it? Windhelm? Done more with that. So, no, is it Windhelm? I can't remember. The College of Mages or whatever. Yeah, and and you never really got to take classes or any do anything cool like that. Which Winterhold. I always wish. The you College had. of Winterhold. Yeah. Winterhold. Nice. Here we go. Um, Sorry. I think it'd be cool if the sorting hat also picked your abilities and it was just like, you are uh, necromancy. It's like, nice. <laughs> oh. oh, and exorcism. <laughs> so just from okay. the very beginning, they're like, great. Just, yeah, thank you. You're going to have a good time here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, you, you'll have no friends and you're just going to talk to demons. So. Yeah. Also, you're in closet. It also seems like you're a necrophiliac. <laughs> what? I, we don't usually yeah. sort that type of thing here. You won't find nah. love with the living is is really what the hat is going to tell you, and then and then they just kind of put you in the Slytherin closet, and you'd go to Slytherin. That's a <laughs> Slytherin trait, right? Anyways, what do you think of the classes, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I think it'll be cool. Yeah, that's Nick, what I meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what you that. meant. That whole tangent is that that's what you're trying mm-hmm. to say through that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, there are some games that have done classes really well. Uh, to be honest, a lot of them are more like the Divinity and Diablo series. Uh, and then I think there are a few games that like maybe haven't done this so well. So I, I'm kind of neutral on it. I think that uh, it's one of those things that might make it more interesting, depending on how the mechanics are and, and kind of what they do there. But when I saw that part today, I, I did think like there was a part of me that was like, oh, okay, well, there's another... There's even more depth to this. And yeah. So I think from my perspective on what I was expecting in a Harry Potter game, I wasn't necessarily expecting that, but it it's adding to like this positive depth and a hopeful experience of something like new and vast that I haven't had before, which I think all Harry Potter fans really just want more new Harry Potter. And so mm-hmm. while I'm sure there's not a single fan out there that thinks the the wild beast was actually a good movie we all watched it enjoyed it because it was more harry potter so like you know that's kind of how i feel about that the, <laughs> the class things the, the uh also the the fam- fantastic so movie. rude he just called yeah. you not a fan right i'm, I'm fine with that i mean i probably i barely categorize as a fan i feel like do you also think Ryan- the hobbits are better films too because that's what you oh, pretty much no. said. Just that's what you pretty much said just now to no, a Harry that's Potter what you fan. Pre- no, yeah. that's not even close. Comparison. It's one hundred percent on par. With you pretty much something... just said that the Hobbit book was horrible and the movies were way better Here's than the Lord of the is. Rings books. When I was a little kid, in class, when I wasn't paying attention, I was like drawing animals all the time, and I would like make up fake animals. Dude, it's like right out of my notebook, man. I, I could probably find you a first it's like grade the scene from. It's like the scene from Superbad, right? Anyways, <laughs> exactly. So. I knew you were gonna bring that up, too. Dude. dude, I just saw. It. I just saw that the guy that did all those drawings for the movie. He gets royalties still. <laughs> Does he? Really? Oh my gosh! <laughs> he like posted on it. Like he's got a TikTok and he posted. And he's like, "This is what I get monthly from Superbad. It's like twelve cents a month." It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So uh, on the note of depth, uh, Nick, I want to talk about the upgrade system because this. So they showed the classes, and you're like, "Oh, that's cool. Like that's 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 deep." And then they go into the upgrade system and how much you can go down that rabbit hole, and that's really what kind of solidified the fact that yeah, these classes matter. And it seems like there's a lot here. So the upgrade system is based on an experience system. You can upgrade things like spells, plants, potions uh, to increase the power of those items or spells, whatever it is. There's also a gear upgrade system. So kind of your wand and what you're wearing, I'm assuming broom. Um, And then you can kind of focus on what you are specializing in, right? So Ryan's talking about wanting to be... What was that? Do you get talents and abilities? (laughs) It feels like it, Ryan. I mean, it really does feel like you are... Like getting to pick your like the light side, dark, you know, like how in Knights of the Republic, it's like the blue one means you're like um, more into attack or greens for protection and yellows for this. And like it does feel like you choose the type of spells of your build. It, you know, they kept specifying that, you know, not everyone's going to play the same way. You're going to choose different spells, maybe more defensive spells 
or more like area of effect spells, more like fire spells. Um, or Ryan, even we, bad spells. Or bad spells, right? They hinted at that, that you can like discover yeah. like... Literally obliterate people necromancy. and use magic yeah. that your <laughs> that your teachers don't even understand. Yes, no, yeah. It's like the language there. So like it, mm-hmm. it does kind of play that line of like, you know, dark side, light side kind of thing. Um, and I just love that you know, no, we're not going to be playing the same way potentially, right? We might, you know, we might lean towards these different variations of spells or Ryan already talked about, he leans towards like animals and the beasts and stuff. Um, there's like a whole plant system too. Like they showed you can like raise plants and grow them and then use them when you're attacking enemies. So I think the range is extremely broad based off what they showed. Um, what did you think of kind of the upgrades and gameplay mechanics as far as combat goes so far? Ryan, I'll start with you. Well, they did. Um, I may have misunderstood this, but they have they they have that room. What do they call it? Like the resource room or whatever. Yeah, it's the room, of room, room of requirement. Room yeah. of requirements. And so, it, correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed like they're they're basically eliminating like farming, right? Where you're behind in a level of leveling up something for this class, and so they'll just provide it for you so that you can you can continue the story or class uh, with what you need. Is that what that was kind of for? I don't It To me, it looked like more of like a, a hub world for yourself or a, a custom, customizable space where you can, what they said is so harvest plants or brew potions, upgrade your yeah, gear. Yeah, but they said that they would intentionally, the game would know what you needed and provide it for you there because the room is like magic. Yeah, and that's from the movies, right, Nick? Or the yeah. books as well as that. Like that's the concept of it, is that it presents what you need uh, in that moment. Okay. So like they say that in the <clears throat> sense of like, I think that's just more lore. The way it looked like it was, from a utility standpoint, it looked like you're using it as kind of like your your home base. It looked like. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause it, I was thinking like, oh, you have to go collect this mushroom for the botany class or whatever like that, and you could just go to that room and get it. I wasn't sure if that's what they meant. I don't think so. Um, okay. Yeah, the room of requirement was, and this is just based off the lore, not because I haven't memorized. Was also known as the come and go room, and it was a secret room in the Hogwarts castle that only appeared when a person was in great need of it. So it was kind of like a. You know, like if you were in great need of it and it had stuff that you needed, then it would appear. But it wasn't necessarily like a uh, like a lounge, you know, or something like that. That's the lore. I don't know necessarily know. Hmm. I don't fully understand how that'll interact in the game, but but for sure they show that you would be brewing potions and harvesting plants there. So like to me, that's kind of like your your base. And then they also showed the vivarium, or like a customizable vivarium, where you are growing and nurturing your beasts. Right? Again, Ryan, this is going to be your play style for sure. Dude, I'm going to nurture them. I'm in them. it too, Ryan. So I'm so going to nurture them. But I'm I do gonna, think I'm I mean, going to pet them. It's cool that they added mm-hmm. that, right? I mean, that's not that is newer mm-hmm. in the Harry Potter space, and I think just the more options you provide in an RPG, the better. So that you do. I mean, we're talking about Elden Ring a bunch lately. And we're all playing in three different, very like very different ways, and it creates really fun conversations about the game. I think this game yeah. has a lot of potential for that. I'm gonna derobe and live among my bees. <laughs> You're waiting to start. <laughs> You're waiting. You're gonna, gonna grow a beard you. out. I'm really, I've been really thinking about it. Yeah, right. It sounds, I, I it sounds like it. it's a, it's just a different pace of life. I think you're gonna yeah. get kicked out of the school for what you're planning with these beasts. You're gonna have to well, live under. They gave me the necromancy and exorcism, so I didn't have a choice. <laughs> I live among the beasts. Anyways, um, I don't think I had anything else on the actual Nick. I don't think I asked yeah. you. What do you think of the combat I, I, and whatnot? Enough about. Yeah, running. I think that. Uh, I, oh, you did, I didn't get to make my point about combat, but we'll let Nick go. Well, no, I, no, I mean, I, I, I opened it to you and you just talked about being naked with animals. So <laughs> yeah. you had your chance. <laughs> yeah, I was go getting, ahead, I was getting somewhere with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Brian was leading. <laughs> I was, I was, yeah, propping up what I wanted. To okay, say. okay, let's go back yeah. to you, Ryan. Where were you yeah, going my... with that? Please continue that uh, point. <laughs> is there combat in this game? <laughs> All of my combat I conversations. Did you can pull out that root that just screams. Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm yeah. gonna do is just like scream at the root. And um, yeah, I I plan to. I've been really enjoying what I did in Elden Ring, where I'm playing a style that I've never played before, full mage. Never done that in any fantasy game I've ever played. Uh, I'm really enjoying it, and it's not at all what I expected. So 
I think I'm going to go after whatever is like the weirdest form of combat <laughs> and just like something I would never normally try. I think I'm going to go after, and that would probably be a uh, beast hus- husbandry. <laughs> You're, you're probably gonna go full just, mage with this game I just too. Don't even know what's going on. Right I, I, yeah, I might go full mage. Yeah, I might, I'm so glad I, I went back to Ryan. Screw around. And, I'm, yeah, I'm so and do I'm, some magic. I'm glad I didn't jump skip over him to hear that just now. Yeah. I'm not gonna love my magic at all. I'm and just it, gonna focus on what I can feed my beast to make it rip your head off. Let's see here. Can I? Oh no, I can, I'm not host. I was gonna see if I can mute him. Nick, what did you think about <laughs> gameplay mechanics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We started this conversation, what we thought about uh, leveling up in classes. I think it's similar to just everything that we mentioned on the, the classes. Um, you know, it said in there that you were going to be able to level up your abilities um, and gain experience and choose which talents you want to upgrade. So, again, I'm always leery of these things. Um, I, I am excited because it shows like a layer of depth to this game but i'm also nervous that they're not going to do that right uh when it comes to combat it looked cool uh, i mean it like really did it actually uh, looked somewhat impressive like i'm not going to say it's the coolest thing i've ever seen in the world but like it didn't look it actually didn't look cheesy right it looked like there was some actual cool mechanics there i do like that they talked about the light and the dark and that like you were going to be able to kind of choose these different styles of play um you know, there's like a defense one they said, um, and then after the three they talked about is when they said the dark one. You know, and it showed him like literally just killing this dude. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, if the mechanic is half as good as just like the gameplay movement mechanics within like the big world that we're seeing, then it should be decent, right? I don't, I don't think anyone goes to play a Harry Potter game for the uh, battle mechanics like ever. I don't think that'll ever be a thing. So uh, I think if they're decent, then people will enjoy it. Yeah. And I think it was more fast paced than I expected. Right. Did you notice like there, he's like firing off spells left and right. And um, yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I didn't expect such fluid combat. I thought it'd be a little bit more slow, you know, casting spells, uh, but it looks very high, high pace and high kind of action with it. Uh, I wanted to ask, if you noticed that there's, they were kind of alluding to a social slash friendship system. Did either of you notice that? No, no, I didn't. So the, no, the comment no. was made around if you're befriending certain people and you get really close <gasps> with them, they might teach you a spell or they might uh, teach you about a certain potion. I think that's a really cool did pick up on that. element that allows you to go deeper, right? It's not just about being in the classes or exploring the grounds. It's also talking like, again, like the films half half the film is just like them hanging out and talking and bouncing ideas off each other and learning from each other so i think it's cool that they're still representing that in game format where maybe there's a really cool special spell that you could only get through befriending this this classmate right um so i thought that was kind of unique and there's there's potential that that could be just super shallow and that like that's the extent of it but there's also like again like in uh fire emblem three houses there's a whole friendship system where you know, this person performs better in battle or will like fight alongside you if you befriend them back at the cathedral or whatever it was. So there's there's elements that could go really deep here if they if they flesh that a little, a little bit more. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, makes it just seem like I love that any time a game puts in stuff uh, and like clearly Elden Ring does this uh, where they just put in stuff that is like optional. And you can do it and it will enhance your experience or like you may even play through the game and never even experience that or choose that option. So, yeah, I'm, and I don't know. I'm about it. I think it's fun. Along those lines of options, too. I like that there is an open world, you know, when you're not in classes, you are exploring the castle, but you're also going to now help me on the name here. You're going down to that town uh, Hogsmeade. Yeah, Hogsmeade, where yeah. there's shops and vendors and probably more missions to do down there. I just like that there's. A world it feels like there's like forests and and the castle a town um they showed like some other kind of structures around the the castle as well so it really feels like there's kind of of a fleshed out you know space to explore you know you have a broomstick to get around even faster what do you think of seeing hogsmeade um because again that's something we see in the films yeah i I thought it was sick, and I think this also gives them a chance if they do DLCs or they add stuff, or maybe it's already in here and we don't know, but 
Uh, there are some really cool, I mean, even like Diagon Alley in the initial, uh, like Harry Potter scenes where they always go to collect their, their books and their wand. There were some like really cool dark places. Um, and I, Hogsmeade may be where they get that, where, where Diagon Alley's at. I'm, I'm not terribly sure, but like, um, I'm excited. It looks like they put a lot of energy into the geography and the different places you can go. And it looks beautiful. Predic- uh, like it really does. Prediction. Azkaban <laughs> DLC. You heard it here first, especially gaming. Ryan, you're about to say something? Uh, Azkaban is the, the prison. Voldemort's son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nailed it. <laughs> nailed uh, it. Crushed it, yeah, I don't know if you guys were thinking this. Probably not. I do. <laughs> when they were, uh, they showed a, a scene where they were doing some magic on a painting, and I was like, "Oh, where, where we're about to going? do Super Mario sixty four right through this painting. And that would be epic. What if all the paintings were like levels? Why, dude? Nintendo was so ahead of their time with that. I can't even explain to you how cool of concept that is." And Harry Potter would be the perfect world for that. Well, did you I mean, see that's actually that, like feasible. It, it turned into a doorway, though. Did you well, know? It turned yeah. into a door, and it just was like. It, did you see when it opened up? It was like basically just the same. It was like another room in the same building. It wasn't like you're in this cool, sure. wondrous place, yeah. right? Not bomb, they, bomb, let bomb me jump through paintings, hills, or something. Yeah, but that's also like just consistent. Yeah, bomb, bomb hills. Oh, can you imagine if they put that in the game? Uh, no, I don't. I don't, couldn't care for it, actually, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I, just feel, like, uh, I just feel like that could be pretty cool. Nick, um, given this this time frame, late 1800s, story elements, what do you feel as a Harry Potter diehard? Because I'm going to call you that now. Reading the, reading the books two and a half times, seeing all the films multiple times. What do you think about the story that we saw so far? Uh, it, it seemed fairly vague, but just this time frame, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, honestly, Real quick, I love... when is go, the go ahead, Ryan? Yeah, thanks. You're when welcome. is the timeline of the action movies? <laughs> like late nineties into the two thousands. Late nineties for real? Yeah, I mean yeah. they were literally we were. It was like our age. Like it was re- it was in real time. It wasn't like in the Dude, past. Dude, I literally if you could have said that was World War Two, I would have been like, oh yeah, for sure. Really? Really? Nineteen ninety one. Is it ninety one? Okay, so it's early nineties. So it's just. It's mm, just, is different. I think you just think London looks old, and then London Hogwarts is a and then Hogwarts is a castle. And you're so the, there was like no frame of reference other than a car, and the only car in the movie was an old car, super old. Yeah, I think there's cell phones later in it though. So for real, I think when they're no. I'll, I'll, anyways, Ryan, Nick, go what, ahead. What did you think of the story? <laughs> I just typed in, uh, are there cell phones? And uh, then it just said North Korea was the first option there. So <laughs> that was the I, no. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I, I like the time era. I really do. I, I have like a, I have like this bent towards the 1800s and specifically London, actually, uh, like Jack the Ripper times. I just have this fascination with the cobblestone roads and probably another reason why Sweeney Todd was such like a, uh, important movie to me, but I think the time the, the time era is going to be really cool. Uh, the story seemed kind of vague, so it it seemed like it was, you know, back in time, but the buildings and the people and the narrative all seemed like really fleshed out and new. So it, it felt like this kind of uh, <clears throat> it felt it feels like we're going to get this Harry Potter story, but just in a different time era. So I I don't know. I'm kind of excited about it. Um, I'm optimistic. It looks good. Yeah, and I think it, it feels good. It opens up options to, or it's a little bit more, they have more freedom because you're not dealing with the main characters that we're so familiar with, right? You're not even like. Yeah, the, the only people that are going to be in there that are recognizable are a few, like select uh, Nick the Horseless Headsman and a few of those pl- people like that that were in the movie, but uh, they're not like actual. Uh, characters from Harry Potter, really. Is there a potential for Dumbledore in this? How old is he? is he? Does he age normally? I have I have no idea to be honest. Uh, I think he ages normally. Okay. I don't know how old he is or if he has some magical lore Who's behind him. Who's to or say? Who's to say? Um, Although, so everyone knows, there are cell phones. 
and they just can't work in Hogwarts because there's too much magic around. That's actual. In, that is actual canon information. Interesting. So, this says uh, during his time as a student, Dumbledore was in Gryffindor House, and Rowling has said that in an interview that Dumbledore was 150 years old. However, on her website, she states that Dumbledore was born in 1881. Oh, he could totally. Well, he would be like a child, either 115 or 116 at his time of death. So I don't so, know. It's in our, well. I mean, look, we're doing the same thing with Star Wars too, right? We're going back in time. So wait, we might. He might be a be, classmate. He could be 15, 16. Yeah, he could be a classmate with us, dude. He totally will be a. It could be Jude Law. <laughs> <laughs> Just young, de-aged Jude Law. <laughs> well, with like Jude Law's adult face, <laughs> 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 but a little shorter. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, anyways guys anything oh, else that i'm missing with this uh with this game pretty dark uh no maybe one comment uh do we do we have any information on avalanche warner brothers studios any other games they've done that's a great question nick um let me look it up right now is, is it warner brothers you said avalanche Avalanche is what was shown on the opening preview, so I don't know if that's a an extension of Warner Brothers. And then it also said Portkey Games, but I think oh, it's Port Avalanche Key is Software, the, <clears throat> the owner of uh, the Harry Potter. So Avalanche Software, I'm guessing, is the developer. I'm thinking. Um, let's see. Okay, WB Games Avalanche. Let's see. Okay, first thing that comes up is Harry Potter. I don't think they have any they of them. Hogwarts Legacy. Wrong. I think they made Curse Three. <laughs> And I wish I was joking. <laughs> Pretty sure they oh, made the Hobbit. Real? Yeah, I think they did. Because when I searched it, that was one of the few things that came up. Um, there's careers at WB Games Avalanche Software. Here we go. Wikipedia. Okay, there's a lot here. I'll go into recent times. Like I said, Cars 3 in 2017. Oh, my. These are, this is my studio. I didn't realize this. Disney Infinity 3.0, 2.0, and the original. They made that. Ooh, okay, things get more concerning. Cars 2. Toy Story 3. Bolt. Narnia. Meet the Robinsons. <laughs> Chicken Little. 25 to Life. Chicken Little it's again. Like Game Boy Advance games. Dragon Dragon Ball Z Sagas. Uh, Tac Tac 2. Rugrats Royal Ransom. Uh, NCAA College Football 2K3. Wait, Prince of Persia. Tac, Tac and the ba- Power of Juju? Uh, <laughs> Tac, yeah. They did develop Tac and the Power of Juju in 2003. Dude, those games actually slap. Okay. Um, Rampage. They developed Rugrats in Paris, the Rampage movie. Rampage is great. Rampage. The movie? Rugrats in Paris, the movie, which I actually <laughs> loved that game on N64. Dude. That was, that was, in, two, that was in 2000. Um, Rampage 2, Off-Road Challenge, Mortal Kombat Mythology, Sub-Zero, uh, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Ultimate Mortal Kombat. Interesting. So they do a lot of they do a lot wow. of IP-based games. I would love to see some Mortal Kombat aspects in this game. <laughs> what <laughs> divergence, though? I don't see a single RPG on this list of games developed. <laughs> right ryan yeah it looks it looked a lot if we're just being honest with ourselves it looked like it looked a lot like they've just taken what's popular in the industry which isn't a bad thing so when you take like some of the best aspects of certain open world rpg games like this and then you put an incredible ip behind it that's that's what everyone's wanted right and so um i think i think they have a really good shot at this being really good um i I don't see this being a uh, Marvel's Avengers scenario because I think they're that big disaster of a game was much more about um, <coughs> just a lack of diversity in what you saw really like how many bases in Utah do you need to blow up before it's like okay, <laughs> I, I get what the game is. So this specifically Hogwarts, I feel like there's so much property there. Like there's so much unused areas to adventure in um this could be really cool okay yeah i'm, I'm in complete agreement with that i think it is it is mirroring what's around them but i, I feel yeah. like like jedi fallen order did <laughs> remember how it kind of took pieces from games it was nothing necessarily original totally metroid there's right. a bug in there metroid sorry Prime. i'm going like this and there's oh like, you were saying like taking pieces guys of games. taking pe- no there's literally a bug in i'm I, combating right now I'm gonna... guys i'm watching <coughs> footage of today's release and oh, jacob get it and oh uh, i saw it i saw it fly across the screen i think it's in my hand all right guys you ready no it is not in your hand it is in my There's hand no watch chance. watch 
it's not not there. God, Out of my hair. I was kind yeah, of excited. I got excited for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> guys, I'm watching footage though of like the combat towards the middle and the end, and I pulled up Marvel's Avengers gameplay. Dude, like you look at like the background stuff, like the cars and the bridge and all these things in Marvel, and then you look at like the background of like the castle and these areas that you can walk around in the stairs and it's totally it's like completely different, different. night I and day did. like there's so much depth i made to, you say that. It, so much depth to <laughs> like everything behind it looks real it looks like a place where you can go and experience uh, yeah. and marvels is clearly just like this very tight linear path that you have to like yeah. walk on and so I, I don't think it's going to be anything like it. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, and if, like, just for the sense, if they can bring back some, like, heart-feeling music and stuff that makes me feel like I'm in the Harry Potter world and I get to explore, it'll probably be well worth it, in my opinion. Is this a day one purchase for you? Yes. Who are you asking? Oh, <laughs> Nick. Yeah. Nick, yes. 100%. Ryan, how about you? Uh, if you guys bought it, I think I'd buy it day one yeah 100 percent yes for me i uh i'm in this this looks again when i think back to that age when i was watching these films for the first time same time when harry or when lord of the rings was coming out i wanted a game like this from both from both properties and we never really got the full thing lord of the rings dabbled with some of it never got something like to this scale so i'm this is what i've been waiting for for like 20 years basically from a game perspective. yeah i love it yeah. i love that they're bringing this out now for harry potter and then next year they're going to give us golem <laughs> <laughs> oh dude that's Let's so be- disappointing i just i can't wait to talk, to talk about, about the golem game man are oh, we playing that is that a day one purchase right game of the year Ooh. maybe game of the decade yeah i'm so con- i'm so confused by that you heard it here first folks <laughs> guys let's get into some housekeeping housekeeping upcoming episodes we've got a review for guardians of the galaxy pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl pokemon legends arceus elden ring sifu which guys are you going to beat elden ring before playing sifu is that where it's going yes Uh, yes almost i have abandoned everything i'm playing and i'm giving my full weight behind elden ring i've quit my job you don't i quit my job you don't get to level 90 in Elden Ring and just walk away there, right? I just can't at this point. I'm too invested. Uh, okay, guys. Oh. I beat Sifu like three months ago. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you were the one on the show that's going to say you beat it. We need we need at least one person. This is a I'll problem. totally <laughs> beat it. I'll totally well, you get... beat it. <laughs> Here we go. Are you really not going to circle back to it? I 100% <laughs> am totally going to circle back to it. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to be no, honest. I, I just know. don't know that I'm going to on this one. Guys, I mean it. And I like my excitement's kind of waned because I'm loving Elden Ring. But I like that was this is it was a game of the year contender until I mean, it still is a contender. Elden Ring is it right now. Right. Um, I'm I was so pumped. Like I wanted to Dude, the second I beat Sifu the game is sick. OK, it is sick. yeah, please beat yeah. it, Ryan. It's it's a great game. All right, totally. and then also I teased this one last, last week. Uh, Nintendo so Switch stupid. Sports, which we got to review that, right? Yes, guys? dude. I can't. I can't wait to be just ten years old again and just yeah. Oh, yeah. make my I entire can. family bowl. You know, it would be fun if we like didn't talk about that. <laughs> if we play the game together and then record after that for the first time, that'd be kind of fun. Ooh, um, that would be fun. Yeah, like a little barbecue, like family barbecue, and yeah. we go play like some, you know, some tennis and some bowling. Do, 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 do. All I picture is someone falling down a hill when I hear that. Yeah, you just like roll it right. Yeah. Um, if there's any game out there, you want, I miss Vine so much. If there's any game out there you want us to play, let us know right into the show. Leave a comment below on the YouTube video. Um, email, Twitter handles, that's all in the description. And uh, comment your <laughs> the house you are in Harry Potter, as yeah. well as what power you would be assigned by the house. If there's any Slytherin the folks out there, I want to I want to hear about it. And if you're sitting here going, "What do you mean? What house am I?" Take go test. take the Harry Potter test. It's come on. Okay. What you if we're being totally honest, and I'm being 100 percent transparent here, <laughs> I I was like pretty sure for a long time that everyone in Slytherin was evil. Like it was just an evil house. It's just not true. And I was like, so why didn't if they like or have already established who's evil? Why don't they just like kick them out? Like jail them. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was like, round them up, man. They're they're even, all of them. I can Happy picture days. Ryan saying they that don't on have his couch. one character in the movies. That's the like the bag of popcorn. The <laughs> Their Gryffindor kid comes in. Dumbledore, they're all really mean, and we should kick them out. All of Slytherin, and that's you know that's they're Ryan. evil. That's can't you see it? That's a legitimate point, man. A lot of stuff would have been. Look at Malfoy's hair. He just looks Slytherin. evil. If they had just cut Slytherin like long ago, just like, sorry, you're out, man. We don't trust your magic. Yeah, all the bad guys were Slytherin, right? You guys are all doing necromancy and exorcism. <laughs> it's not even in it. Well, actually, I think there is some death stuff that they do. Okay, anyways. Um, yeah, do they bring Voldemort back to life? That's necromancy. That's literally, true. The, literally that is, how the uh, villain comes back. That's true. That's, that's literally the definition of necromancy. And so. doesn't he, like, he possesses someone at one point and they cast him out. That's possession, bro. That's exorcism. Yeah, I think I think we're telling some of those lines. I think you, you, okay, you make a good point. Uh, yeah, it's undeniable. I have a lot of good <clears throat> points to make about Harry Potter, but we can save that for another episode. I have a lot of really Stupid. good points that are solid. You'll think they're dumb. I could, I could convince you that the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Outro Them is music the is starting now. I'm movie. putting it in. Yeah. It's the best movie of the series. I can convince you that. And on Give that me note, two white claws and fifteen we'll minutes of your time. You <laughs> and next. you will be a <laughs> master. Thank you for listening to this episode. I love Have you. a good week. See, see you later. Oh, jeez. Give me two white claws and fifteen minutes of your time. <laughs>